Someone you love has been murdered or was killed by a drunk or reckless driver. It is an understatement to say that your life has been changed. Um, on November 7th, uh, 2004, <clears throat> our son was, was killed and he was murdered. He was murdered by a colleague of his and they went on a work conference and the colleague went to the reception desk, identified him as my son, got access to the hotel room, were given the keys. The security guard only looked at the name, didn't look at the picture, but my son was sleeping. So he killed him and then we found out that uh, he had been killed and he had been stabbed 28 times while my son was sleeping. In dealing with homicide, feelings of anger and pain are deep, and it will take a great deal of hard work and time to recover. I did tell the police initially when I came in, I assumed it was a car accident. And he said no. And then that's when he said he'd been murdered in his hotel. So that was very difficult to cope with. And so I just withdrew. I just, um, you know, it would have been easier for me to have died then, I felt, than coping with the pain. Like the pain was too intense for me to think I could live another day and another day and another day. I just, and it felt just like my... I just could feel like a whole thing had been ripped from inside me. One may never feel as if they have recovered. However, many persons have been in a similar situation and learned to manage their grief. They will need time, determination, and often the support of a caring listener. The feelings one experiences are likely to be very difficult and foreign. In some instances, what you are experiencing may be similar to what others are feeling, and in other instances, it may be hard to relate. This is especially true in crimes such as murder. But it is important to mention that the intense feelings of loss are shared by all. I've read a lot of books, and it tells you about, you know, statistics about uh, marriage failing and marriage not failing. And what I've found... Um, what has done to a family is basically has broken our family, which I find that very hard. And not so much on my immediate family, my husband, my children, but on my sisters, on my parents, because they have different expectations. You know, um, They wanted me to do things the way they think they should, it should be done. And I told them I didn't have a script to follow. The influence the media may pose when sensationalizing murder details may also cause additional suffering. In some cases, families who do not want to know tragic details end up finding them out since details seem to be all around them, in the paper, on the news, and elsewhere. This can have an enormous emotional impact. It hit the news in December, and on the news, on the web, there was a total description. Like, I didn't know my son had been stabbed 28 times. I know now. They could say, well, you don't have to read it. But, you know, everything that I was looking at, it was plastered with all the facts that I chose not to know at the beginning. So that really kind of bothered me a bit that it was just all written by the press. So, you know, I, again, I guess they're doing a job, but I think they should clear with the family, make sure to see if it would be appropriate or it would be okay to put such horrible descriptions, which to me, have really impacted me because before, I'd, all I can think now of is 28 
stab. Like, it just grinds at me, you know? People who have been a victim of crime may experience many different reactions. The initial reactions may include shock. A victim may feel stunned, dazed, or numb. They may feel cut off from their feelings and from what is going on around them. They may also experience denial. They may not be able to accept what has happened, and so they may pretend that nothing happened. Then, over several hours or days, those feelings may gradually fade and others may take their place. Victims may begin to feel anger towards one who has committed the crime or the police or court system for not doing enough. They may also be angry that this has happened and that they no longer feel in control. Fear, they may feel afraid that what they experienced might occur again. Guilt, that perhaps something they did led to the crime, even though they did nothing wrong. Nervousness, in crowds, or very suspicious when they are alone with someone they do not know. Flashbacks, reliving the event over and over in their mind. Images of the event keep popping out into their head when they least expect them. It feels as if it's happening all over again. Numbness, they are unable to feel anything emotionally. Helplessness, something really bad happened that they were unable to prevent. They may feel vulnerable or that they are not in control of their life. I think everybody has kind of a, some kind of an immediate reaction to trauma, um, but not everybody proceeds through trauma in exactly the same time period or in the same way. So you would have some people who have all kinds of great coping strategies already in their repertoire who might really be accepting and know that they're going to um, have some really powerful feelings and be able to go with that and other people that kind of fight that. Since strong feelings affect your physical health in the weeks after a trauma, you may notice that you are beginning to experience some of the following effects. Sleeplessness, tiredness, dreams and or nightmares, poor concentration, memory problems, you may have difficulty thinking clearly, headaches, there may be changes in your appetite or changes in your libido, you may suffer from aches and pains, or you may feel that your heart is beating faster. A person experiences trauma trying to make sense out of some really unusual situation in their life. Um, the trauma response is kind of a stress response and it's um, a lot of energy, your adrenaline is, is cranked way up. The, you have both an emotional and a physical response to really unusual things that might happen. It's important to note that trauma reactions do not solely affect the victim. They may also affect those who are close to them. So what we know is that there's secondary trauma to, to people who are in a position to support the, um, the victim and, and survivor. And, you know, we really feel that it's important as well to acknowledge that together and to provide them with support and education. There are several things that people should not do after they have experienced trauma. Here are several recommendations. Firstly, don't bottle up your feelings. Feelings are natural. Don't feel embarrassed about them. Bottling them up can make you feel worse and can damage your health. Let yourself talk about what has happened, how you may feel, and don't worry if you cry. Don't take on too much. Being active can take your mind off what has happened, but you need time to think and go over what happened so you can come to terms with it. Take some time to get back to your old routine. Don't drink or use drugs. Alcohol or drugs can blot out painful memories for a while, but they will also stop you from coming to terms with what has happened. They can also cause depression and other health problems. Don't make any major life changes. Try to put off any big decisions. Your judgment may not be at its best, and you may make choices you later regret. Take advice from people you trust. Here now are some positive things that you can do to help you along your journey. Give yourself time. It takes time to accept what has happened and to learn to live with it. You may need to grieve for what or who you have lost. Find out what happened. It is better to face the reality of what happened rather than wondering about what might have happened. Be involved with other survivors. If you go to funerals or memorial services, this may help you to come to terms with what has happened. 
It can help to spend time with others who have been through the same experience as you. Take some time for yourself. At times you may want to be alone or just with those close to you. Talk it over bit by bit. Let yourself think about the trauma and talk about it with others. Don't worry if you cry when you talk. It's natural and usually helpful. Take things at a pace that you feel comfortable with. Get into a routine. Even if you don't feel much like eating, try to have regular meals and eat a balanced diet. Taking some exercise can help, but start gently. Do some normal things with other people. Sometimes you will want to be with other people, but not to talk about what has happened. This can also be a part of the healing process. Take care. After a trauma, people are more likely to have accidents. Be careful around the home and when you are driving. And finally, ask for support. Family and friends will probably be able to see you through this difficult time. However, you may need to see a professional if your feelings are too much for you or go on for too long. The services section of this DVD resource will be able to provide you with the proper referrals to the support you may need now or in the future. They do not know. Flashbacks, reliving the event over and over in their mind. Images of the event keep popping out into their head when they least expect them. It feels as if it's happening all over again. Numbness, they are unable to feel anything emotionally. Helplessness, something really bad happened that they were unable to prevent. They may feel vulnerable or that they are not in control of their life. I think everybody has kind of a, some kind of an immediate reaction to trauma. Um, but not everybody proceeds through trauma in exactly the same time period or in the same way. So you would have some people who have all kinds of great coping strategies already in their repertoire who might really be accepting and know that they're going to um, have some really powerful feelings and be able to go with that and other people that kind of fight that. Since strong feelings affect your physical health in the weeks after a trauma, you may notice that you are beginning to experience some of the following effects. Sleeplessness, tiredness, dreams and or nightmares, poor concentration, memory problems, you may have difficulty thinking clearly, headaches, there may be changes in your appetite or changes in your libido, you may suffer from aches and pains, or you may feel that your heart is beating faster. A person experiences trauma trying to make sense out of some really unusual situation in their life. Um, the trauma response is kind of a stress response and it's um, a lot of energy, it, your adrenaline is, is cranked way up. The, you have both an emotional and a physical response to really unusual things that might happen. It's important to note that trauma reactions do not solely affect the victim. They may also affect those who are close to them. So what we know is that there's secondary trauma to, to people who are in a position to support the, um, the victim and, and survivor. And, you know, we really feel that it's important as well to acknowledge that together and to provide them with support and education. There are several things that people should not do after they have experienced trauma. Here are several recommendations. Firstly, don't bottle up your feelings. Feelings are natural. Don't feel embarrassed about them. Bottling them up can make you feel worse and can damage your health. Let yourself talk about what has happened, how you may feel, and don't worry if you cry. Don't take on too much. Being active can take your mind off what has happened, but you need time to think and go over what happened so you can come to terms with it. Take some time to get back to your old routine. Don't drink or use drugs. Alcohol or drugs can blot out painful memories for a while, but they will also stop you from coming to terms with what has happened. They can also cause depression and other health problems. Don't make any major life changes. Try to put off any big decisions. Your judgment may not be at its best, and you may make choices you later regret. Take advice from people you trust. Here now are some positive things that you can do to help you along your journey. Give yourself time. It takes time to accept what has happened and to learn to live with it. You may need to grieve for what or who you have lost. 
Find out what happened. It is better to face the reality of what happened rather than wondering about what might have happened. Be involved with other survivors. If you go to funerals or memorial services, this may help you to come to terms with what has happened. It can help to spend time with others who have been through the same experience as you. Take some time for yourself. At times you may want to be alone or just with those close to you. Talk it over bit by bit. Let yourself think about the trauma and talk about it with others. Don't worry if you cry when you talk. It's natural and usually helpful. Take things at a pace that you feel comfortable with. Get into a routine. Even if you don't feel much like eating, try to have regular meals and eat a balanced diet. Taking some exercise can help, but start gently. Do some normal things with other people. Sometimes you will want to be with other people, but not to talk about what has happened. This can also be a part of the healing process. Take care. After a trauma, people are more likely to have accidents. Be careful around the home and when you are driving. And finally, ask for support. Family and friends will probably be able to see you through this difficult time. However, you may need to see a professional if your feelings are too much for you or go on for too long. The services section of this DVD resource will be able to provide you with the proper referrals to the support you may need now or in the future.